hello. <laughs> Hi, are you guys back at Brigade now? Well, <laughs> I'm sorry I can't be with you there, but you know what? You've just caught me reading my Bible and maybe I can do Bible bits for you today. You'd almost think someone had asked me to do it. Now, last week, I understand that you did the very first verse of the whole Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Wow, there was nothing and God made the world. That's pretty cool. But I was wondering to myself, what is this new world like? So I was reading the next bit to find out. Let me read it with you. The next bit says, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and then there was morning, the very first day. Wow, the first ever day. That's not a long reading from our Bible, is it? But there's a lot in it. So I want us to have a little think. What was this new world like when it says God created the heavens and the earth? Wow, what was earth like? Well, it says that the spirit of God was over the waters of the deep. So there was a lot of water. OK, so there was water. Uh, but was it water like this? Well, the Bible says that water, the water was formless. Now, what does it mean to be formless? Well, it means that the water didn't really have a shape. There was no pattern to it. It was just a bit of a mess. This water's kind of in a shape, so... Yeah, it wasn't, um, it didn't look like this. It was more sort of, more like this sort of thing. I'm going to be thirsty later, but never mind. So it was formless. So if we'd have been looking at it, we wouldn't have seen something with a nice shape or a clear pattern. In fact, we wouldn't have seen anything at all because the other thing it says was that the earth was dark. So it was kind of, well, <laughs> I'm gonna pick it up and show you exactly what it would have looked like. Right, <sighs> here it is. Can you see what I'm saying? Look, here it is. Look, can you see it? Did you get that? No? No, because it was dark. It was dark. It was messy. And the other thing it says was that it was empty. So how else can we see water? Here's some water. This water isn't empty. This is what we're used to seeing in water in rivers or in the sea. But the Bible says that the earth was dark, formless and empty. Now, wait just a minute. Do we really want to live in a world like that? A world that's dark? A world that's empty? A world that's a mess? 
Mm, I don't think that I would like to live in a world like that. Would you? But the world didn't stay that way. And we can see that, can't we, if we look outside? It's not dark and formless and empty all the time. So what happened? Well, let's have another look at our passage and see if we can find the answer. So it says, God said, let there be light. Oh, and, um, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. Now, this is really important because God hasn't made the sun yet or the moon or the stars, but he has made light. Where do we think that the light is coming from? The light is coming from God. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So it says that the earth was formless, empty and dark. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So God is there. The spirit of God is there. And the thing that changed was when God spoke. God said, let there be light, and there was light. The word of God made the light. Now, this is right at the beginning of the Bible, in a book called Genesis. But if we go forward a little bit in our Bibles to another book in the New Testament called John, we will find something that sounds a little bit familiar and I want you to see if you can hear what sounds a little bit the same as the start of Genesis that we've been reading. So it says this, remember that Genesis starts in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, remember? This is how the book of John starts. John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That sounds a bit confusing, doesn't it? What John is saying is that the Word of God isn't just something you say or something that God says. The Word of God is a person. And John tells us later on in his book that the word of God, that person, is Jesus. So this sounds a bit complicated, doesn't it? Well, let me break it down for you and see if we can understand this together. You see, there is only one God. This one God has three persons. That's confusing, isn't it? I find that confusing. Let me try and help you to understand it. So we've got God the Father, who created the heavens and the earth. We've got the Spirit of God, who in this week's reading we saw was hovering over the surface of the deep. And we have the word of God. When God speaks, amazing things happen. And when, as we go through the rest of Genesis chapter one, in later weeks, we're going to learn a bit more about those amazing things that are going to happen. So we've got God, who you might here referred to as God the Father. We've got the Word of God, who you might hear referred to as God the Son, and that's Jesus. And we've got the Spirit of God, 
and you might sometimes hear him called the Holy Spirit. All these three persons are together one God. So that is a really important thing for us to know about God because before God created the heavens and the earth, before he created anything, God was three persons in one. And that's important because if God was just one person and had been one person for forever, well, I think that God would be lonely. And I don't think that God would know how to love because he wouldn't have anybody to love, would he? But our God that we know is a God of love. He loves his people and he sent Jesus to save us from our sins, from the bad things that we've done because God loves us. So it's really important for us to understand that God is this one God in three persons because God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit together through forever have loved each other and had a good relationship with each other. And because they can have that good relationship, God can love us and we can have that good relationship with God as well. So that's why, even though it's a difficult thing for us to understand about God being one God with three persons, it's hard, but it's important for us to understand that because it gives us confidence that God can love us and we can be part of that really good relationship. Thank you for listening to me today. And I'm sorry I can't answer any questions for you, but I'm sure if you've got any questions, the leaders there will help you to understand what we've been talking about today. I'm just going to pray for us now. So if you can put your hands together and close your eyes, it's not magic. It just helps us to concentrate on the prayer. And if you agree with my prayer at the end, you can say Amen. Okay. Dear Father God, we thank you that we have been able to learn about how you created the heavens and the earth and brought light when there was darkness and nothing. We pray that you would teach us all about how you made this beautiful world for us and how you've saved us through your word, your son, Jesus. We pray that you will help us to understand these things as we learn more and more from your word over the coming weeks. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.